Rob Latham, of course, is top world-class competitive shooter. You taught a lot of people to shoot, which is the other thing. We were talking about these small guns, particularly, like the XDS. They're not different, but they amplify an issue that people need to know about. Is that fair? You're right. To make the gun lighter and smaller, we sacrifice mass. Okay? Lighter. So as soon okay. as you take away the mass, it changes the way the gun operates. So you have to supply some of the mass that's missing. Okay. So, so. basically, it's, it's a, a, a all these pistols are a, a recoil operated device. There's that's a spring in here. Right, there's a spring that has to be compressed because that's what holds everything together. And that's what makes this fly back forward. Right, so a big heavy gun, you really it has so much mass that you probably could put it on the table and pull the trigger and it might fire, but the smaller guns just don't work that way. So you have to supply that mass, but there's another thing that's even more important than that. Okay. To control a little gun like this right. takes a lot more pressure and strength and forward pressure in your stance than most people would expect. Well, and one of the things that happens is because there's not much mass here, as the spring comes back, if the gun moves back, then the spring's not going to come all the way back and you may get a misfeed because you didn't operate the gun correctly. Exactly. You know, most of the, they call it limp wristing and there's lots of terms for it, but basically it's that the frame of the gun is moving, moving with the slide of the gun. Okay, so, so then how it do you teach work. people how to do that? It's actually very simple, and you'll end up using quite a bit more strength pressure than you think you do. So you hold the gun up there, Tom, okay. and aim. Now, if I move the slide quickly like this, it happens so fast you don't really feel how much pressure you're holding against, but okay. your body bobs a little bit. To teach people to actually hold the gun right, I pull the slide slow. Okay, now you resist it. See how it moves, yeah, you, back? It moves you back? And that's moving the slide back one fourth of its movement. So right. watch this. When I push it all the way, yeah. it wants to push you back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the slide back and you push it to the stop against me. When you're holding that much pressure, that's how far forward you should be. So when the gun cycles, your body doesn't move back and forth at all. Okay. But that's how much pressure and strength it takes to hold on to the gun properly, not only to make it work but to control a little gun like this XDS-45 in recoil. And what I'm doing is, when you start doing that, I'm tightening up my grip and I'm really leaning you into You should gun. be leaning into it hard. It's basically an issue of mass, not just strength. Gripping strength is super important, right. but mass is a bigger one. It's big, getting into right, the gun. Big heavy guys like me don't have to lean as, forward as, as far forward as like light people. My wife, she has a very, very pronounced forward lean because Eyes she doesn't weigh your anything. toes kind of a thing. Exactly. That's exactly how I explain it to her. So to control the gun properly for her, she's going to be leaning forward. Whereas for me, I kind of just stand there, but then I got tons of fun, you know? You, you, you get two things out of it. One is you get reliable feeding, mm -hmm. but the other is you're able to control the recoil, which means you're able to shoot accurately more quickly. That's correct. So you, you're faster. That's right. Everything about it is better. When people ask me how, mu how tightly should I hold the gun, I tell them they should hold it as tight as they possibly can without inhibiting their ability to release and operate the trigger. Great shooting tip from Rob Latham.